What's up YouTube, Jeff Beck again from High on Android and DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys a tutorial that was requested on how to add adoptable storage to your Galaxy S7, Galaxy S7 Edge. Now, first of all, the most important thing about this, this is not my technique. This was discovered by Paul O'Brien over at Modico, and I will link his site below. I highly encourage you to check out his original article and tutorial, as that is what the video is based on. And also, since he put in the effort and discovered this first, he definitely deserves the credit and the support. So that will be linked below. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and get into it right now then. So, first of all, if you don't know what adoptable storage is, that is the feature in Android Marshmallow which will allow you to take an SD card, which of course you have an SD card slot on your Galaxy S7 Edge, and it'll allow the SD card to actually become one with the internal storage. So if you take a look here, I've already done this, and then I'm gonna format it and go back and show you guys how to actually do it. If you look inside my S7 Edge, you'll see that I have a total of 96 gigabytes. The top is actually an incorrect total, not 128. That's a small little bug, which I'll talk about in a second. But you can see I've got the 32 gigs of internal storage and then also my 64 gigabyte SD card. And it's all listed under device storage. So I've adopted my SD card storage to be a part of my internal storage. Now, one of the most important things is to make sure you know why you wanna do this because you, are, you, you will see some performance degradation if you put really big games on the uh, SD card as adoptable storage, because of course big games are gonna require fast transfer speeds and it's always gonna be faster from your regular internal storage because Samsung is using a very, very, very fast internal storage, whereas the micro SD card itself is definitely gonna be slower, even if you get a fast micro SD. So the first thing to do, uh, if you're just sort of debating doing this, is to decide why you wanna do it. If you need extra storage for apps that are not super intensive, then great, this might be a great idea. It also simplifies because then you don't have to worry about uh, pictures and videos getting saved to the SD card as an external source. It's all now internal memory. So a few things you're gonna to need to get this started, and let me go ahead and show you what I have here. You're gonna need a fast micro SD card. So I use the Samsung Evo Plus 64 gigabyte. Uh, this is one that I got from Best Buy with my pre-order. You guys saw this in my Verizon unboxing of the Best Buy uh, package that I got from them. So that's what's in here. I got an extra one because you know I guess I got the regular Galaxy S7 as well. So pick up a fast micro SD. I'll link this one below if you want to give this one a try. And then you'll also need the USB cable to connect your phone to your computer because we're going to use some command line to actually get the adoptable storage to be a part, so make your micro SD one with the internal storage, to adopt the storage. So you're gonna need this to connect it to your computer. You can do it on Mac or PC. I'm gonna be doing the tutorial today with my Mac. So one other thing, of course, that you're also going to need, which I will link below, and that is you're going to need the Android developer tools on your computer. So I'll link a uh, link below to how to download those and how to get those installed. That's in a separate process, but if you've done uh, command line flashing with your Nexus before, if you own a Nexus device, you probably already have that on your computer. If not, you're definitely gonna need to download that because we will be using the ADB command. All right, so let's go ahead and get the computer in here. Let's get this started so I can show you guys how to do it super quick, and then I'll show you how to reverse the process as well. We're ready to go now. So one thing you'll need to do first with your Galaxy S7 Edge is turn on developer options so we can enable USB debugging. Of course, down here in your phone, about phone, let me go to the right place, about phone, go to the build number. You can tap on the build number five times. You can see I'm already a developer here. So if I go back, I now have developer options listed here. And you'll wanna make sure you have USB debugging selected there. As you can see, that's turned on on my particular phone. So then once you have that, you can go ahead and connect it to your computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to my MacBook. And then once you've connected the micro USB cable, another thing you'll wanna do is go here. Instead of connected for charging, you'll wanna switch this and switch it to software installation. That way it'll let it interact with the computer. So then we'll go ahead and set that down. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the command. So you see I've got my command line up. You can do this in your Mac by going to terminal. You can see that's the terminal application. Uh, if you have a PC, of course, you can also bring up your command line. And then again, you're gonna need those uh, Android developer tools. So make sure you have those installed at this point. So if you've got all that stuff ready to go, then you're ready to go ahead and get your adoptable storage. So we're gonna type ADB shell. And then you'll see we get into the shell where we can now do the Android uh, device commands. And then next we're going to type sm list disks. 
and then we'll see our disk number right here. It's disk colon 179 comma zero. All right, so once we have disk 179 comma zero, we're gonna go ahead and type the partition command. It's SM partition, and then the name of the disk itself, disk colon 179 comma zero. And then the last spot here, you have a couple options. You can choose to take the whole entire SD card, make it your internal storage, which is what private will do. If you wanna just partition part of it and split it between external storage and internal storage, you can do that with the command mixed. And if I link, uh, I'll link below Paul O'Brien's uh, Modico article again, he's the one who discovered this little trick. You can type mixed 50 to split 50% external and 50% uh, internal adopted storage. So I'll go ahead and hit this command here. It's gonna take a minute for it to actually execute and then we'll get back to the command line. And you can see right there, we're back to the command line. So now the command should have been executed. So now if I go really quickly into my storage, uh, you guys can see here, if we go into the storage here, we have the correct adopted storage, which we would expect. You see the total is wrong. Now this is a little bug because the way that they're actually, the, the way that the partition is renaming uh, the volumes is a little bit incorrect. Uh, it appears to be, if you take a look at the thread on Modico, I'll, I'll link it below if you're interested. It appears to be renaming it uh, a different name than instead of deleting the previous volume and then giving it the same name. So you can see it looks like I have 128 gigs at the top, but if you look at the bottom here, 32 gigs internal, and this is my 64 gigabyte card. So these are actually correct right here. Those are your correct amounts of storage. You can also install a third party storage uh, tracking app if you wanna keep track of this. But now I can go ahead and use this uh, as internal storage. And again, you can sort of split it 50-50 if you want. All right, so those are the quick and easy steps as to do it with the command line. Now quickly, I wanna show you guys as well how to reverse this process if you wanted to go back and make this external storage once again. All right, so we just went ahead and looked at how to get adoptable storage with your SD card on your Galaxy S7 Edge using some command line uh, commands, which we just showed on the MacBook. But what if you wanted to go back? So you can see again, I now have all of my SD card as part of my internal storage. You can see right there, just as I showed when we finished up with the computer there. And what if I decide that I don't want that? Well, what I can do is I can go into the SD card here and you can go into, first go to format as portable storage. It's gonna give you a warning saying that it's gonna erase everything. I didn't actually install anything this time, but if you do decide after you've used it as adopted storage for a while that you want to format and go back to an external SD card, you've gotta be aware of the fact that all of your data is gonna get erased. So you've gotta back up your pictures, your media files, You've got to do all of that other stuff to make sure that you've got your data safe. And then you can hit the format button and this is going to send you back to your regular external SD card. So if I hit done and then we go back, you can see now my internal storage is just 32 gigabytes and now the SD card is back to portable storage. So yes, you can reverse this process. You can also go back to the command line and do this by changing private to public, which is something that Paul mentioned in his article. So again, I highly recommend that you consider why you want adopted storage. It's a cool feature to have, but if you play a lot of games, you wanna make sure that you don't have those games on the actual SD card as internal storage, because then that's gonna slow down some of your gaming. It's probably gonna give you subpar performance. And of course, you can manually move things around uh, if you have the SD card as your adopted storage. You can move those games to the internal storage until you fill it up. So again, just be wary of that warning. I think a lot of people who want this know what they're doing, but if you're someone who doesn't know why you would wanna do this and you just saw this video, just be a little cautious and ask yourself that question. So again, uh, this is the Snapdragon 820 Verizon variant, so I've tested it with this one. I also tested it with my T-Mobile variant of the S7 Edge. Works fine with both of those. I don't know about the Exynos one, so flash or use the command line prompt uh, at your own risk. Uh, it should work though. There's some discussion again on Modico about how to do this, and I haven't had any problems yet just using basic apps. I've added some uh, while using the adopted storage and I haven't had any problems. So I'm gonna continue to use this with adopted storage. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back, obviously, after the video. Use this one with the adopted storage and use my other one, my T-Mobile S7 Edge, without it and sort of see if I notice any performance degradation and I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, so again, I'll link all the relevant stuff that you need below. Definitely check out Paul O'Brien's article. Thanks to him for discovering this little trick. You guys can find me on Google Plus, Twitter, and Dope Tech Daily at the links in the description. Like and subscribe if you wanna see future videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.
Thanks a lot for watching. You're gonna need to get this started and let me go ahead and show you what I have here. You're gonna need a fast micro SD card. So I use the Samsung Evo Plus 64 gigabyte. Uh, this is one that I got from Best Buy with my pre-order. You guys saw this in my Verizon unboxing of the Best Buy uh, package that I got from them. So that's what's in here. I got an extra one because you know, I guess I got the regular Galaxy S7 as well. So pick up a fast micro SD. I'll link this one below if you wanna give this one a try. And then you'll also need the USB cable to connect your phone to your computer because we're gonna use some command line to actually get the adoptable storage to be a part, so make your micro SD one with the internal storage, to adopt the storage. So you're gonna need this to connect it to your Marshmallow, which will allow you to take an SD card, which of course, you have an SD card slot on your Galaxy S7 Edge, and it'll allow the SD card to actually become one with the internal storage. So if you take a look here, I've already done this, and then I'm gonna format it and go back and show you guys how to actually do it. If you look inside my S7 Edge, you'll see that I have a total of 96 gigabytes. The top is actually an incorrect total, not 128. That's a small little bug, which I'll talk about in a second. But you can see I've got the 32 gigs of internal storage and then also my 64 gigabyte SD card. And it's all listed under device storage. So I've adopted my SD card storage to be a part of my internal storage. Now, one of the most important things is to make sure you know why you wanna do this because you, you, you will see some performance degradation if you put really big games on the uh, SD card as adoptable storage, because of course big games are gonna require fast transfer speeds and it's always gonna be faster from your regular internal storage because Samsung is using a very, very, very fast internal storage, whereas the micro SD card itself is definitely gonna be slower, even if you get a fast micro SD. So the first thing to do, uh, if you're just sort of debating doing this, is to decide why you wanna do it. If you need extra storage for apps that are not super intensive, then great, this might be a great idea. It also simplifies because then you don't have to worry about uh, pictures and videos getting saved to the SD card as an external source. It's all now internal memory. So a few things for a computer, you can do it on Mac or PC. I'm gonna be doing the tutorial today with my Mac. So one other thing, of course, that you're also going to need, which I will link below, and that is you're going to need the Android developer tools on your computer. So I'll link a uh, link below to how to download those and how to get those installed. That's in a separate process, but if you've done a uh, command line flashing with your Nexus before, if you own a Nexus device, you probably already have that on your computer. If not, you're definitely gonna need to download that because we will be using the ADB command. All right, so let's go ahead and get the computer in here. Let's get this started so I can show you guys how to do it super quick. And then I'll show you how to reverse the process as well. We're ready to go now. So one thing you'll need to do first with your Galaxy S7. What's up YouTube? Jeff Beck again from High on Android and DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys a tutorial that was requested on how to add adoptable storage to your Galaxy S7, Galaxy S7 Edge. Now, first of all, the most important thing about this, this is not my technique. This was discovered by Paul O'Brien over at Modico, and I will link his site below. I highly encourage you to check out his original article and tutorial, as that is what the video is based on. And also, since he put in the effort and discovered this first, he definitely deserves the credit and the support. So that will be linked below. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and get into it right now then. So, first of all, if you don't know what adoptable storage is, that is the feature in Android